A subscriber recently asked me if coding jobs are at risk because of platforms like Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, not only providing you really nice templates and professional looking websites, but backends that allow you to do a lot of customization and storing data as well. It's a really good question. And especially when you combine platforms like these with insane machine learning innovations that are actually coding for you, what's gonna be left for developers to do in just a few years? And is it even still worth learning development at this point? I've got some pretty interesting thoughts on this and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So if you're worried or just curious about the future of development, this might be an interesting video for you. My name is Aaron Jack. This channel is all about helping you become a remote developer whether that's inspiring you, showing you cool projects, or giving you tutorials. So if that sounds good, consider subscribing. All right, the future of development, how is it gonna change in the next five or 10 years? And I think to answer that question, we can actually look at the past. First, we only had really relatively low level languages like C, and just bear with me here as I talk a little bit about the history of programming languages. I see a lot of interesting parallels from the past where new programming languages and frameworks come out to these no-code tools we're seeing today. First, take a language like C. When Python came out, you could now learn how to code in months and not years. And regardless of if you knew how operating systems and memory management worked, you could get a script up and running in just an afternoon. When higher level languages started getting traction, so the barrier to entry was lower and you could now do a lot more in less time. Now you would think that this would decrease the total number of developer jobs, but instead something very interesting happened. It was kind of a chain reaction where now companies could be more productive. So they could release new features and products faster meaning they could increase their revenue faster and more revenue meant they could hire more people instead of less. Not only that, but this reduced overhead meant companies that could not even have an online presence previously could now be founded. We saw an echo of this positive feedback loop with the framework revolution when Ruby on Rails first started becoming popular around 2008, 2007. In just a few year window, Twitter, Airbnb, Facebook, Dropbox, Pinterest, these companies were all founded and a lot of them were built on Rails. At this point in time, what it meant to be a developer also started to change with more reliance on libraries and gluing them together with custom code rather than just writing everything from scratch. The reason I'm explaining this is because I think we're seeing the same thing with no code tools. More companies overall being founded, companies being able to move faster and be more productive. And as a result of that, once they have the revenue, they can bring on developers to do more custom things, style changes, and really just give themselves even more of an advantage. This should at least somewhat easier for you about the job market and demand for developers. You might also underestimate how lazy people are when it comes to learning technology tools from scratch, especially when they already have a business to run and their website or e-commerce store is just gonna be supplementary to that. My point is this, it's pretty much inevitable what it means to be a developer is gonna to continue to change. And if the trend continues, we're gonna see more of a shift towards being a technology generalist, an alchemist who knows when to use off the shelf tools and when to code custom solutions. And away from just being a coding machine, like the Linux founder who coded the entire operating system in his basement. Hope you don't mind if I make fun of Linux and Linux users. <laughs> anyway, how can you front run this trend and be a cutting edge developer of the 2020s and beyond rather than someone who's stuck in the past? The generic advice would be never stop learning, but what I would actually say is familiarize yourself with these no-code tools so you understand where the boundaries and limitations are. We are already seeing an explosion of these platform developer jobs like Salesforce and Shopify developers, and it's just going to continue because as good as these platforms are, they can't possibly cover all business use cases and integrations, especially that large companies need. And remember, large companies have a lot of revenue to spend to get their system just right. In summary, the developer of the future is going to have to have a broader toolkit than ever. It's not just going to be comprised of the hottest, newest language. It's likely going to involve a combination of code and no code tools because the market is more competitive than ever. And if it means getting a prototype out before your competitor, well, that's something that companies are increasingly gonna value. Not only that, but the fact that people are getting more technologically savvy means they're gonna want training to do things themselves. So don't underestimate the support component 
of the things you built. And that's also somewhere that knowledge of these platforms and tools is really gonna come into play. Okay, whether you're just starting out or you're already an experienced developer, I hope this video gave you some interesting things to think about. Because as someone who helps people learn this stuff, I think about the future of development a lot. I know this was more of a ranty video and you might not agree, so let me know your thoughts below. Finally, my freelance developer bootcamp and community is gonna be out at the end of this month, so keep an eye out for that. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.